You're making fuel cells that can create electricity from human blood. <laughs> Delightful. Congratulations. Hi, it's Future History. We're remembering the next 100 years. And some scientists from MIT and a technical university in Munich have created an awesome new little battery thingy. It's actually a fuel cell, not a battery, which is part of why it's so great. It's 400 nanometers thick and 300 micrometers wide. So we'll quickly just talk about how big that is. It's important to get this down because small stuff is very much the future. One nanometer is a billionth of a meter, which more relatably is a millionth of a millimeter. So there are a, a million nanometers in every one of those little millimeter things. Then a micrometer is one kind of, it's a thousand times bigger than that. So a micrometer is a thousandth of a millimeter and a millionth of a meter, which also means it's a thousand times bigger than a nanometer. So something that's 400 nanometers thin is very, very thin, and it's by 300 micrometers, which is about 30 human hairs all lined up together. So why is this exciting? For one thing, it can replace potentially batteries in human implants. It could perhaps potentially wrap around the outside of something like a pacemaker or an insulin delivery device and power it by drawing electricity directly from the glucose, any glucose that is close to it, any glucose from glucose, from sugar in the blood, darling. That's what it gets its power from. It's not a super new technology. This has actually been around since the 1960s, but it hasn't been this good ever. So scientists are in the experimentation phase. They put a whole bunch of these little power cells on one little experimental strip and they poured a bunch of glucose over it and they got up to about 80 millivolts from each of these little cells which they reckon pasted together is enough to power some existing implants and that could potentially cut down way a lot on the size of these implants because most of them uh, are heavily distorted toward battery containment because a battery has you have to keep the energy on board so it's got to be locked in the battery so some implants are like 90 percent battery as a result of that that's why a fuel cell that can draw energy directly from the blood is so potentially exciting i think that's basically it do you want to know what's in it yeah sure it's a it's a platinum anode and cathode with a Syria electrolyte. Syria is a ceramic, which is known to be biocompatible, so it's not gonna hurt any bodies by being inside of them. It's also highly durable. These implants will be good to up to 600 degrees Celsius, which is over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Why would it need to be that hot? So you can sterilize it basically. So that is pretty good news. It, it could work, it's biocompatible. It's sterilizable, it's gonna provide enough juice to replace batteries, and most crucially, it's getting its power from inside the bloodstream, which is really what makes it so exciting because that's, that's the step toward future tech. Where does stuff like this go? Into your body really soon. <laughs> like in the next 10 or 20 years, if you're watching this in the 20s, you will have the option of having a subdermal implant of some kind as medical tech and fun tech get a little closer and some of the fear of that stuff becomes a little less compelling you might say take a fitbit style thing and just slip it in under your wrist uh, to monitor your blood levels directly and you might power it with something like this glucose drawing fuel cell uh, oh yeah i was going to tell you how it works are you curious i was curious basically what happens is the platinum is quite reactive with glucose the glucose hits the platinum and turns into 
glucotic acid and releases a pair of protons and a pair of electrons. The protons get put in the middle where they interact with air and just create harmless water that sloughs out of the bloodstream. And then the electrons go to a circuit that powers the device. I thought that was cool. Maybe you will too. So in the future, a lot more stuff like this is going to go in human bodies and in other kinds of bodies that we'd like to monitor. But the really exciting bit is that it's, it's, uh, it's another step on the road toward integrating bodies into technological structures. So in the very long run, you will be able to look back and say, oh yeah, we added this and then we added that and then we added this thing and then we added that thing and then we replaced the liver with this better device and we replaced the pancreas because obviously this is better than the pancreas and then one day in a thousand years you turn around and go oh it's it's like not not the original thing anymore but there may not be a moment where you feel like you've changed right like you don't become not human after the first implant but you don't become a cyborg immediately either. So it's like a gradual shift. Maybe you could say at 50%, you're more machine then than person. But in the long run, it's going to feel very similar. And that is how you're going to become a robot. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Go eat some sugar, hopefully from fruit. Future bye.